we want, but won't impose costs unnecessarily on small businesses for no additional gain. I call Michael Wood. Thank you, Mr Chair. Very happy to take a call on the bill. And I want to focus my comments in on supplementary order paper uh, number four in the name of the Minister and the Chair. Um, now, most of us in this House, in fact, I think most people admire the quality of chutzpah. Um, that is the ability and the willingness to sort of stick your jaw out there and make an argument or a proposition, no matter how preposterous it might be. And I want to thank the, uh, thank the member who launched off in this debate for demonstrating um, ample qualities of chutzpah at the outset. And, and let, let's come to that. Well, let's come to that, um, uh, Mr Ross, because what we had here was a National Party member uh, from a government that oversaw the Pike River tragedy and the carnage in our forests, lecture the Labour Party and demonise the unions about, about worker safety. And of course, and of course, we're getting to this very quickly in National Party speeches. Um, anything that comes up, the unions are the bogeymen. The unions are the bogeymen. Well, actually, what we're seeing in the supplementary order paper put forward um, by the Minister is quite simply a position that is about evidence. Because what we had in the original bill from the government in respect of drug, drug and alcohol management plans was a, prob was a solution looking for a problem. And if you actually review the submissions, um, if you actually review the select committee process, if you review, in fact, the majority report on the select committee, what you actually find is an absolute paucity of evidence that there is a systemic problem that requires the implementation of drug and alcohol management plans. And it should be a fundamental precept of the way that we make policy in this House that before we uh, impose legislative burdens on whole sectors of our economy, that we actually clearly identify the evidence and the problem and then work out um, a solution that is proportionate to that. And that is simply what we do not have in this case. And so the Minister makes a very good point. The Minister makes a very good point that still within the bill, um, ev uh, with the provisions uh, as changed by the supplementary order paper, we still in fact have rigorous provisions for ensuring the health and safety of people working in the shipping sector. And let's just talk through those briefly. Uh, the very first point, and it's affirmed in, in the supplementary order paper in the bill itself, as we still in fact have the provisions of the Health and Safety at Work Act that apply. A bill that was passed by this House, what, one, two years ago? That's all. Um, a bill that was worked through in a, a pretty collaborative manner that imposes an um, extremely systemic health and safety framework across every employment sector in our economy. It places a burden on the PCBU, in this, which will generally be the employer in this sector, to ensure that risks are appropriately managed. They must identify the risks, and if they identify a risk around, around drug and alcohol abuse, they must have a plan in place uh, to eliminate or minimise those risks. They must. Those are the provisions of the Health and Safety at Work Act that already apply. Now, overlaid on top of that, uh, we have in the bill, and this is left in place as a result of the supplementary order paper, still the relatively extraordinary power for the director to require random drug and alcohol testing. And the government continues to support that provision to ensure that there is a backstop where the evidence supports that that should happen. So let's just be very clear that this isn't any sort of soft bill, um, as has been made out in the uh, opening comments uh, from the opposition, um, in which we're going to have Cheech and Chong um, captaining vessels on the New Zealand high seas. This is a bill which sees the continuance of the Health and Safety at Work Act and its provisions and the implementation where required of random drug and alcohol testing in place. But we're not going to put in place additional legislative burdens on that whole sector um, that in fact aren't necessary and are not supported uh, by the evidence that has been put before the House and put before the Select Committee. Um, the second point I just want to touch on, uh, Mr Chair, um, relates to um, the other change in the supplementary order paper around shipping services uh, to the Chatham Islands. And really this is one where the House just needs to listen because the people on the, of the Chatham Islands who are represented by uh, Mr Paul Eagle um, are entirely reliant on a sustainable shipping service to sustain their society and their economy. And they are deeply concerned and they made these rep representations to the Select Committee that opening up that line would allow effectively predatory, behavior to, um, uh, predatory commercial behaviour to come in, um, to undermine the current operator and to potentially put at risk a long-term sustainable shipping service uh, to that island. It's a small population, 
quite frankly, it, it is unlikely to justify multiple operators. They have a situation that works well for them now, and the changes put forward by the Minister in the supplementary order paper will simply ensure that this House listens to those concerns and doesn't disrupt a very important service. Um, thank you, Mr Chair. Mr Speaker. I call um, Alistair, Alistair Scott. Thank you, uh, Mr Chair. 